Hi, Gemini. Happy July. Or whenever you arrive to this space. How you going? How's it going, Gemini? Okay. I hope you had a nice birthday. First and foremost. I feel like something... Something looks different. Okay. Uh, oh. Uh, I don't remember exactly how it was said last month. But, um... You have to let Virgo do something on their own. Okay? That's being emphasized again. Just a minute. The North Node again, it's in your sign, right? Um... Doing a little bit of research about where that is or what that might mean could be very, very helpful for you. Okay. Could line something up, uh, sort of connect the dots in a way to see where you are being directed, especially, I guess, in cancer season. Um, well, we're preparing ourselves emotionally for something, right? You're preparing yourself emotionally for something. Um, so in the future, uh, you will be ready in a heart space. And once that's settled, then you get into your mind and can make different decisions about it. So I heard no big decisions. This is kind of a collective message too. No big decisions until, um, you know, maybe Virgo season, couple couple months from now. Okay. Let's open up your cards and see what's happening here. Gemini. Okay. Hold on. Wow. I feel like you're going to have a lot of uh, memories attached to... Hold on. Please don't focus on the one negative thing out of... Okay, there's there's 10... You have 10 things, right? And there's one negative thing. Don't, don't give that too much. Especially when it comes to the people that you really, really love. Because I heard you're an asshole too. <laughs> We're all assholes sometimes. We're all jerks. You know what I mean? We all make mistakes. We all get uptight about stuff. We all are over emotional sometimes or whatever. We're not, we don't always use our ultimate wisdom. That's okay. But I heard don't, don't focus on the one little thing. It's a waste of your time. I meant that really lovingly. Uh, that that was meant to be loving, but it was also meant to be an. I saw it as an arrow. That's kind of your Sagittarius, right? We talked about this North Node. So the South Node is. Well, we have to re... You're reteaching yourself. You're reteaching... There's reteaching that's going on. There's there's unlearning. There's relearning. Um, there's redirecting. Uh, this is important. And if you're fine-tuning into the thing that sucks, it's like, of course, that isn't going to help much. So please be aware of that. I mean, we could talk about it if you want to, like the thing that sucks, but again, it's like that keeps drawing me in. Now, I will say that if, since this energy is kind of doing this and everything at this time is in retrograde and we're in cancer season, which is immensely emotional and like longs for the cancer energy to me, always longs for the past, you know, until 
you figure out that isn't where your feelings come from is other people or the past it has to do with how you feel now that's the important part okay I'm actually going to take this negative thing and I'm just going to put it off to the side for now because there ain't that card is where you can't do um, where you're overly concerned about something that you cannot control and really where it comes from is a lack of fear that worry or that focus on the negative so I'm just going to put that the fuck over there um, what is this reading Gemini <laughs> Okay, you want to talk about it and just get it out of the way? Is that what it is? Because you are immensely emotional, but you always try to play it off like you ain't? Alright, well then fine. Let's put all this, let's put all this stuff that you know is good, right, off to the side if you're aware of it. Let's, let's put this over there. And this shows me that whatever it is that you are concerned about well again I see that it's not necessarily true um, and it whatever you're concerned about has a lot to do with your own self-value so wherever you feel stress uh, or worry or are picking apart the one little thing that's difficult maybe that needs to be paid attention to because it's something that you have a habit about and you need to unlearn something so you can relearn so let's see how to unlearn where it is that you put your stress or your emotional space Sagittarius the opposite of you right the other side of you the other the other twin the the shadow so where you're pulling your where where you pull your worry from especially if you know your chart is Sagittarius is is where you get a lot of your uh Oh, I heard destructiveness from stubbornness from what teacher are you still mad at is it elementary school middle school high school college what teacher are you still mad at are you mad at any of them? I also see since everybody is a teacher, right? Including toddlers and infants and boyfriends and girlfriends and best friends and coworkers and enemies, like these are all teachers, right? So what who are you mad at? And then I heard, why are you giving them your power? Who are you upset with and why are you giving, why are you giving them your power? Well, even if it's just annoyance, right? Why are you giving your power, this really strong, empowered, and, you know, part of yourself, why... Why do you let that direct all of your energy into that space? Because you can put your energy anywhere that you want. And I see no one person can change the world. It's an individual process change. Yes, that connects to the collective. It connects to everything, sure. But it's an individual process. And maybe because you're such a dualistic sign, it's hard for you to feel like an individual.
And when I see what is it that you're learning about love... What have you learned about love over the last two years? I also see that you will be learning about love a lot. What you love, what you where your energy, like the energy of love. Where How does that grow? How does that go? Where does it go? Where does your energy go? And is any of those routes uh, like just a habitual place or is it actually factually intentional? Because you're the only one in control of that. Your goals, your desires, what you achieve, your soulful lessons, whether you're worried or scared or upset or bothered or anxious or whatever. That's all you. That's all your power. And I see it is important not to give your power away to uh, things that are unnecessary. Nope. Not good. Right? It doesn't help much. No. Okay, it is cancer season, right? While I'm recording this. I heard, or rather, I see... Where is it still, that still hurts that you, because there's something that someone did that you can't seem to forget about. And for most of you, it has to do with someone that you loved. Probably someone you were like sexually involved with. That you wish you could talk to. But you know it really wouldn't be worth your time. Even though you wish that it could be better. But you know that it is what it is. And so instead of going round and round and round about what could have been. Try to see it as. Well. I guess you got to ask yourself. What did you learn from that situation, from that person, from that teacher, what did they teach you? Because sometimes the teacher is there just to teach you how to unlearn, unlearn something instead of learning. Do you know what I mean? It's there to correct something or to realign something. And Sagittarius's reading actually talked about that. There was an energetic alignment. Okay? And... Because at this point, it's very important for things to be uh, clear. But in cancer season, it never really is. And wherever, you know, whatever talks to your moon and your chart and all of that. And how your mother talked to you and your ex-lover and whatever. How you talk about your feelings, it, it makes a big difference. And I know that you hide a lot of your feelings. Um, about what you really want because you're sort of I keep doing these little like I don't know if you can if you can see be grateful but it's like I keep cur curling up like wanting to be comforted like the, there's this you, know, you need to hug yourself Maybe you need a hug. Maybe you need some exercise. And I'd sense for you, because you're such an active sign to me, uh, in many different ways, you probably need to uh, come at things in a, in a variance of ways. You can't ever do anything in like a singular thing, a singular way of, to go about something is not good for you. You have to multitask to get to the place that you want. You have to, you have to try in different ways. You have to, you have to take it different, um, I can't think of the word. 
you need to come at it from different angles and different means to be able to find the place that you want. Because the cool thing about duality, especially when it comes to astrological signs, like you, like Libra, for instance, you always have options. But because Cancer is your older sister, then... It's just like children, right? The, the, the eldest is the one that makes all the mistakes, right? And what you're supposed to do from, uh, I guess, okay, out of your two, you have two twins right inside of you, which you would think that they are the same age, but I feel like you need to put one of them as the older child and one of them as the younger child and start viewing this in a different way. Because I actually feel like Sagittarius is the, is the eldest child uh, that made all the mistakes and, you know, ran away and, you know, fooling around and going to keg parties and all, all kinds of things like and then the the other part the other ch ch child or twin in you is is this gemini which is like a, the younger child that just wants to like read and learn and is sort of it's not exactly as gregarious you know they're a little bit more like oh i'm just gonna actually sit and observe you so i can see what i need to do So I guess you need an outlet for that Sagittarius energy. You need an outlet for that wild child in you. But the important part is for you to be this really calm, stable, oh, I already learned my lesson. And for any of you who are, you know, let's say like 30 plus, the North Node in Gemini happened 24 years ago. So rewind. And where were you? What were you doing? kind of choices did you make uh how are you feeling you know really go back there where did you live you know stuff like that because um well it's repeating the cycle so we're meant to do something different than we did last time because we have more experience and knowledge that you've gained right you and Sagittarius both represent learning, in a sense. So, what have you learned? Now, let's move into your positive, 1818. That was, that's nice. Okay. Gemini. Okay. I see for most of you, uh, hold on a second. I see in ways of work, most of you are in a good position. Like financially, you're fine. Uh, you, you're you're on good ground there. Uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be thinking about what the possibilities could be in the future or how you're going to. Uh, I don't know. You never put all your eggs in one basket, right? You want to think about well. You know, see, for instance, we've been talking about this North Node. It's like, well, what, what do you want? Right, because after this mutable energy, we're moving into the North Node in Taurus and the South Node in Scorpio. So we're moving from mutable, which is sort of fluid and, and back and forth and not exactly settled into a fixed 
uh, energy, which equals something of great stability in the physical world that is also very helpful for your soul. And depending on what you unlearn and relearn and uh, admit that you don't know and expand on and think into the future and ask really appropriate questions and be honest with the fact. And I see again, letting more, uh, uh, letting Virgo and and uh, letting Virgo take the lead on because it's sort of like. I know this is very astrological, but Gemini and, and Virgo are both, so they say, ruled by Mercury, right? If you're the first to can, or the first part of Mercury, that means you are the baby. You're the little one. You're the younger child. And then Virgo is the older child. So in your chart, Gemini will represent where you're like a kid and you get really excited. Um, and Virgo in your chart would represent where this is, there's more maturity through experience. Let me see here. This is interesting energy today, Gemini. Okay, I see career, career. Because this is also, career is you in the world, right? Um, because the first part of this reading was like a very internal process, right? The things you don't show to the world all the time or the things that are happening under the surface or that are private and personal because you deserve that like anybody else to have those quiet conversations with yourself you don't have to tell everybody everything i heard it ain't none of their fucking business <sighs> you know like you're entitled to that privacy um but then this part of the reading and the positive part about it is like what's happening on the outside in in the world and i guess the the more that what's happening you in the physical world and with other people is the more positive that is that means that the more positive the conversations are being had on the inside um and the more you work on that internal space the again the better it will be on the outside it like it bounces back on each other I saw, I saw, you remember where kids, where you play leapfrog? You know what I mean? <laughs> it was really cute. Uh, I do see most of you are artistic in some kind of way. It's like you can see things, uh, you have experience in things that other people don't have. I also see to be open to the fact that there is something that you could learn. Uh, some of you may want to take a class on something that you would like to expand in or maybe just whether this is full-time or part-time or just a hobby, like how would you like to take more of your creative endeavor and be able to, uh, you know, maybe you just want to make a sp like a studio in your house or you want to set up a space or you want to, again, like take a pottery class or, or whatever it is. Um, I see no one can take anything from you, Gemini. In the physical world. Um, but there is something that you need to surrender to emotionally. For a lot of you, about an old relationship or something to do with love, you know, I know that's a very deep word that means so many different things and so many different levels, but however you connect to that, 
um, Just a second. I really don't think you're concerned about the external world at all. I actually see you being very confident in that. But you're still sort of cautious about what you share, about what's on the inside. I heard, or maybe you're just being a little bit more selective in what you say about how you feel. Because, of course, that determines what the future will be, right? Right? It's like each word is like a different is another step. And I see that as you're going along, it's it's better you need to have more of a smile on your face. That's important. <laughs> Maybe you want to even pay attention to your face. You know, like cuz this is all Aries right up in the head. It's like where pay attention to your face. Pay attention to your head. Is it down? Are you using good posture? Uh, are you? I heard. Are you forcing anything? Um, and I see. Where is it that it is hard for you to be happy, even though you have everything that you need? And maybe that goes back to looking like. Picking out the little thing that you don't like, even though there's so much awesomeness going on. You know, this could just be a little part of yourself that you don't like and you pick at yourself all the time. You know, it could be, you know, maybe because this is Aries. Aries talked about a lot about that last month where it's like, do what is it about you that you don't like? And whatever it is that you don't like, well, I do something about it, you know? Realize that you can and realize that that's good. Um, you've completed something with Scorpio. You still have to forgive an old relationship. Uh, Sagittarius for you in your chart is like an angel with dirty wings. But whatever the, the karmic, uh, whatever your karmic lessons are with Scorpio and Sagittarius, I see are, are being completed. Like you're starting to feel more stable and solid about that. But there's still something where you're like, am I ready for that? I guess that's kind of what the North Node is, too, is wherever... That's why I said to look in your chart, your map, because wherever it is, it's going to push you to a place that will... It, it, it's wanting the soul to advance, right? And we are automatically, like, kind of pushed towards that. But there's, it's, there's, like, the majority of it, we are, like, say, soulfully ready but intellectually or emotionally will be like, oh my God, am I ready for that? And you're actually not quite ready emotionally or uh, mentally. 
completely settled about it, but the soul is ready. Does that make sense? And so you just kind of have to go and be like, well, I guess, I, I guess I'm just going to have to do it. And, um, and have a lot of faith in that. And remember that, you know, we are never given anything that we cannot handle. You know what I mean? We're never given more than what we can actually literally handle. It isn't going to kill us. You know what I mean? Absolutely not. It's, it's just a vehicle to bring us to that place that we need to be so that we can learn something else about your own self. And I guess for you, a lot to do with, um, you know... I keep seeing these children at varying ages, you know. But I guess it's about growing up. I feel like most Geminis would have siblings, right? Uh, if you're here, so who are your siblings? I heard, what are your difficulties with them? And how can you... be more of that big sister or big brother to yourself, you know, maybe, maybe it's easier for you to do that than to be the parent of yourself, right? Maybe that's too harsh. Cause you're like, ah, I don't want that. I want to have fun, right? So be a big sister, be a big brother to yourself. Maybe that's the way you have to look at it to make it easier for you to understand, right? For your heart to be more receptive to it. And I want you to know that wherever you're going and whatever is leading you there. Um, again, I guess I need you to remember that you're soulfully ready. And so I see for the next year, like prepare yourself mentally Right, like we talked about in the beginning, pre preparing, your, preparing yourself emotionally a little bit, preparing yourself mentally, then you prepare yourself in your heart, uh, and then you can prepare yourself again mentally. Um, until it becomes like in the physical world, and then you're going to be like, okay, I am ready. Yep, that's better. You know, and maybe that's why this reading went this way, like from the beginning until now is I think sometimes you want to take when there's worry or concern or whatever and just put it, you either focus into in on it too much or you just want to put it off to the side, like put it under the rug because you don't want to deal with it, right? You want Libra to deal with it. You're like, here Libra, here older sister, you deal with that. I mean, you can get good advice from Libra, right? That's your big, that's your big brother. So you can get good advice from that, right? Yeah. But, um, it may be helpful for you to just assess it, the emotional part of it, you know? Don't just intellectualize it, like, be a part of them, right? Because right now, again, you're preparing yourself emotionally, which connects so much to your heart space. And then we get into Virgo season and we'll be more, you'll understand more, you'll have more of a clarity about what it is so that you don't waste your time and you get what it is that you want. And that also gets all that bullshit out of the way so that you can have a clearer road to move forward that's a lot more peaceful and you're not so concerned about whether you took the right road or not because you were really paying attention emotionally, right? Fascinating. <laughs> King Gemini. I love it. I really do hope you had a nice birthday. Um, I hope you have a nice now. Thank you for all your wonderful support here on Patreon, everything. It's so cool. Um, 
I don't know if this will be up by the new moon, solar eclipse, solstice, Father's Day, uh, which is intense, and that's like in a couple, three days from now, but um, yeah, I hope that was nice for you. Happy solstice, happy, happy change of season. Um, yeah, and thanks again for all your wonderful support. It means a lot. Your effort means a lot to the collective, you know. Even those small amounts of assessing your own emotions. I know you can't see, like, the physical result of that ultimately. But it makes a physical difference. Right? And don't forget to hug yourself. Love you.